You okay? Yeah. It's just... I thought when I saw those divorce papers, it would throw me into a huge depression. I thought it would be the final reminder of what a colossal failure I am. But I don't feel that way. And that's because of you. That's really nice to hear. I mean it, Scott. And I want to make you a promise right here, right now. I will never fail you or hurt you, ever. I mean, you've given me a second chance, and I will not let you down. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Scott Chandler. It's Caleb Cooney. Caleb? What can I do for you? You invited me to dinner. Well, the invitation's still open. Good. Pick a date and let me know. And Stretch, be sure to bring your bride to be. Will do. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are you up to? Junior is about to learn a lesson in retribution. Country style. Caleb Cooney? You can't work for him. He doesn't work. He chases squirrels around a mountain in West Virginia. Not anymore. He's staying in Pine Valley. Why? He's starting a law practice. <laughs> yeah, right. He needs a legal aid. All right, let me get this straight. Caleb Cooney was a lawyer? Yeah. He was the lawyer. He gave it up for a while, but now he's back in business. And he wants to hire my wife. Marissa, don't you see what he's doing here? He wants to get even with me for buying Cortland. Yeah, maybe. I... Not, not maybe. He's pushing for payback, and he's using you to help get it. Okay, look, I haven't even accepted the position yet, and I made it very clear that I wouldn't be involved with anything that has to do with you or Chandler. You have to say no. JR. You don't know this guy. You don't know what he's about. This is our future that we're talking about here, Marissa. No, this is my future. Okay, Caleb Cooney was one of the most brilliant attorneys in the country, and he's offering me a job. I would be a complete idiot if I didn't jump at the chance to learn from him. This is not a real job. This is a shot across the bow at me. Uh, well, thank you for your faith in me. Marissa, don't make this about... What, about me? About my career and my ability? I don't want you taking this job. Yeah. Well, it's my choice. It's not yours. Hey. I ditched the balloons, okay? <laughs> and everything you said back at the station, I heard you. Now you hear me. We were partners for a while. And we shared a lot, on and off duty. We caught burglars. We won a dance marathon. <laughs> We sat through some of the most boring stakeouts ever, all while listening to your annoying, boring-ass jokes. Oh, come on. So there's no way in hell I'm letting you walk into that operating room without letting me do this. Good luck, Brad. And if you need anything and you don't call me, I'm putting you on the graveyard shift for the next month's train. Got it? Got it. Specialist. Give me his number. I need to talk to him. Talk to me. Okay. Uh, this medication, it was experimental, but it was working, right? Dr. Belden uh, told me how my results were good. And for a minute, it was as if he'd handed me my life back and... And he told me I was pregnant. Two miracles at once. 
Jesse, I'm a physician. I should have known immediately that the experimental drugs could pose a risk to the baby. I mean, I should have never let myself get excited. But it has been so long since I've had one moment of joy that for a minute, I let myself have it. And then it was gone. We'll get it back. I stopped taking the medication immediately. And there is no way, no way that I'm doing anything that will pose a risk to this child. Maybe we have been up against tremendous odds. And here we are, still standing. Trust me. We're gonna find a way to make this work.